But what police say could really help their investigation is determining who this victim is. There was a news conference here at Loma Linda Medical Center, and that is when authorities did confirm that two San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies were airlifted here. After that two-year-old child was found to be under the influence of marijuana, police searched this daycare center behind me. Inside, they found unsanitary conditions. I am with the deep-frying, bacon-wrapping, chocolate-drenching <laughs> food king of the Orange County oh, Fair so right dope. here. This is Chicken Charlie himself. The wing is so close that authorities are actually pushing back onlookers who are trying to reach up and touch it. Since Friday, the snow machines were able to make enough snow to open two lifts and four runs for the start of the season. We just had confirmation that one firefighter from Cal Fire was injured. Apparently a rock got loose, rolled down a hill, struck him in the leg. He has minor injuries, but he was taken to the hospital just to be checked out. Now we're at a ranch here called Laurel Springs Ranch. This is one of the buildings that is actually threatened by this fire. The criminal complaint against John Boyle alleges that he had numerous texts and online conversations with boys between the ages of 11 and 15. The judge said today in the courtroom that the most disturbing conversation was between Boyle and a school-aged child, in which he asked the child if he wanted to hook up again. This is expected to be the largest car and bus caravan in California history. You can see the buses are parked, ready to be boarded. And that's certainly the best advice for drivers out here, just to take it slowly on the roadways. They're wet, they're slick, and now that snow is just starting to accumulate, and it's certainly coming down fast. Louisa Hodge from our Los Angeles station, KCBS, reports it could be a history-making catch. 1,323 and a half pounds. That's what these fishermen from Texas say is now the world record weight of a Mako shark they reeled in halfway between Huntington Beach and Catalina. That thing was a true killing machine. It, it, when it came in, it the, the, the jaws on it, and it, it, it was traveling at 50 miles an hour. Jason Johnston was one of the crew members filming for a show on the outdoor channel called The Professionals. They planned on catching a Mako shark, but Johnston says once the belt was on him, he wished it wasn't. It was truly horrifying. I mean, imagine, imagine being locked onto a, a Volkswagen for two hours. When we first saw it jump out of the water, it was a scream like a million children were just saved. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty wild. This one came up wanting to kill every single thing in its sight. It was bite, bite, bite every direction. I've done a lot of things. That's the craziest thing I ever did. Um, definitely don't want to do it again. I think my shark fishing career is over. <laughs> <laughs> New world record. While they're waiting for the world record to become official, the shark itself will be donated for scientific research. For CBS This Morning, Louisa Hodge, Huntington Beach, California. So this is it? This is it. Wow. Right here. It's a lot of dresses. It's something that took me 40, uh, 56 years to do. This is not a costume shop or a warehouse for a feature film. Call it a hobby dressed with a slight addiction. The collection is just like if you're a stamp collector or car collector. Paul Brockman bought every one of these frilly, poofy, sequin yeah. gowns for his wife, Margot. <laughs> this is beyond a big closet, right? <laughs> so do you remember the first dress she ever wore? Yes, I do. Do you know where it is? No, I don't. It's here but I don't know right now where it is. The inspiration for the first dress came to Paul when he first laid his eyes on his wife dancing on a ballroom dance floor in Germany. He knew he never wanted her to wear the same dress twice. I spent every dime that I had that I could buy a dress with, I did. So your husband buys you dresses that you don't wear? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he, he has done quite, you know, bought a lot of dresses I never did get into. You see, the dresses were Paul's passion. His favorite part of a dress? The sound, swishing sound by either dancing or walking. But the swishing sounds remained a secret until now. If anybody would find out that I was collecting the dresses, they maybe think, what kind of guy is this? He managed to skirt the issue until his daughter discovered his stash in his garage. She says, what's all this? Well, I had to, I had to tell her. Paul Brockman is finally sharing his secret and letting the public into his massive closet for a bargain. With the money he earns from selling the dresses, he plans on fulfilling his lifelong dream of dancing with his wife at the New Year's Ball in Vienna. That's what I want to do before I go. I want to do it one time, to go to Vienna 
and dance at Waltz. But the big question is, where will she get a dress? I probably will find one in here. <laughs> of the 55,000 dresses the Brockmans owned, this Gardena warehouse is just a third of them. They're selling them here on eBay and 55,000dresses.com. In Gardena, Louisa Hodge, CBS 2 News. Ask anyone and they'll likely have a story. I felt like all of a sudden everything I had was gone. But call them and they may not answer. People had just been bumping into me and I like literally started being like, did you take it, did you take it? When it comes to stealing cell phones, thieves are dialed in. A criminal's mind, they just see money. To some, stealing a cell phone is like taking candy from a baby. In this YouTube video, that couldn't be more true. You can actually see a man taking a cell phone from a one-year-old while she was watching cartoons on it. And and watch as a man on a subway waits for the doors to start closing to swipe a woman's cell phone right out of her hand. Police say the majority of cell phone thefts are crimes of opportunity. A lot of our street robberies have to do with uh, people who have their heads uh, buried in the cell phones. Long Beach Police Sergeant Aaron Eaton says while the number of burglaries and robberies may fluctuate from city to city, it's becoming more common that cell phones are involved. The items that are stolen now are, are primarily cell phones. And and thieves, Eaton says, aren't picky. Just look at the number of phones Long Beach police retrieved. High-end phones, smartphones, and even flip phones are all considered valuable commodities. And as you can see here, this is a collection of uh, cell phones that we've uh, gotten over the, like probably the last uh, month or so. And in Los Angeles, cell phone thefts are up 27 percent from 2011. But while cell phones are piling up in police evidence labs, a lost cell phone is rarely found. Credit cards, makeup stuff, sunglasses, more credit cards, somebody's wallet with a ID and credit card. Jim Fishman shows us the amount of lost items that turn up at his bar, Renee's Courtyard Cafe in Santa Monica. Notice there's no cell phones. While they get calls every few weeks from customers who've left their cell phones in the bar, they rarely are found. Unfortunately, we have to date maybe been able to return one in the course of a year. Um, they just don't, they just don't turn up. That's the same story at Barney's Beanery in Santa Monica, but here they use security cameras to catch crooks. We've seen customers kind of like walk by and like grab a cell phone that was sitting on the table before it got bust. General Manager Vanessa Bowie says you'd be surprised by who is stealing cell phones, she was, when she witnessed one of her least suspecting customers go in for the grab. We served her and her personality that she had and the way she looked, she was very clean, um, she had a bubbly personality, it's no one you would think would steal anything from anyone. If you steal a cell phone in this restaurant, you'll be caught on camera. And while security cameras are just one way of catching cell phone thieves, Cell phone carriers are working with the federal government and law enforcement to come up with an even better solution. By November of this year, they plan on launching a database to prevent the reactivation of stolen smartphones, so a thief who stole a cell phone wouldn't be able to use it. I'd feel a lot better if I didn't know that somebody was just off there with my phone that they stole of mine, like using it however they please. Kylie Woodsman says this would have saved her hundreds of dollars, and not just from having to buy a new phone. About a month later, I got my cell phone bill, and I saw a bunch of charges for ringtones and for naked pictures, and um, there was a couple charges for some app use. While wireless providers are working on new solutions to protect cell phone users, law enforcement offers this advice. If your cell phone is stolen, file a police report right away. Always keep track of the serial number on the back of your phone, so if police recover your phone, they'll be able to return it to you. Lock your phone and don't store secrets like passwords and account numbers on your cell phone. I felt like I couldn't do anything because all my stuff is on there, my social security numbers, my, uh, my, my parents' uh, cell phone numbers, my bank account stuff. And if you download apps with tracking devices, hunting down your phone's whereabouts without the help of police can be more dangerous than you'd think. With somebody tracking down their phone, it's, a, it's not safe because you don't know exactly who you're dealing with. And some of those individuals who steal the phones are, are uh, violent criminals. From violent thieves to mobile muggers to first-time offenders, cell phones are calling to more and more criminals, making your small wireless device a big target.